So this season, all we've been hearing about is Dak and Zeke, but not much Dez. Dez was held to one catch for 10 yards, slipped on a pass intended for him that was intercepted and also had a crucial fumble late in the fourth quarter. In their two games against the Giants this year, Bryant had two catches for 18 yards. Max Kellerman, is he yep. worth the money? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dez Bryant is a home run hitter. I just described Odell Beckham as the best home run hitter in the game. But Dez Bryant is a home run hitter. That's what elite receivers are. And... Um, He's also, in many respects, a good teammate and, and being kind of discredited for being a bad teammate, which I think is strange, considering how he's always supported his teammates and, oh, he's, demonstra he's too demonstrative on the sidelines. Yeah, because he's exhorting everyone. He wants them to win. And he usually balls out, had a bad game yesterday. He reminds me of, not as good, but like T.O., but not as good. Yes, he is worth every penny. Max Kellerman, maybe he is. Ryan, maybe he is. I'll be damned if we're going to say that today. <laughs> not after that performance last night. We ain't saying that today. Now, I'm not saying, again, I want to emphasize, I ain't saying that Max Kellerman is wrong. Right. Dez is my man. I got nothing but love. I mean, he's a cowboy, but I still got love right. for Dez. But there is a legitimate argument to be made that Dallas Cowboy fans should petition the number 88 being stripped from his jerk, from his body, and he shouldn't be allowed to play. Allow me to go there. Allow me to go here. Oh, Stay with me. A. I'm totally open to being corrected after I say All what right, I got to say. Because go. I got number but love for death. Okay. Not today. It's not about your numbers. It's not about the fact that you were targeted one time, only caught one pass, and the one pass you caught, you fumbled because Janora Jenkins stripped you. Mm -hmm. It's not even about that. Did you watch Dez last night? You know your football, Ryan. That's why you're here. I ain't played this damn game. You did. You trying to tell me you saw the same Dez? I'm talking about the dude that fights. I'm talking about the dude that battles. I'm talking about a dude that never, ever appears soft. I'm talking about a dude that's religiously on the sideline, marching up and down, talking, you know, imploring his boys to show up. Dez Bryant, I don't know if I saw him take his helmet off last night. This dude just seemed like... He took some Prozac and so he looked depressed. Something was wrong with him. Something wrong. I, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm talking one game. Yeah. I'm not talking about this season. I'm not talking about his career. I'm not talking about the 70 million that he signed with the 45 million guarantee. I'm not talking about any of that. He's Dez. He deserves it. I'm looking Dez because I got nothing but love for Dez. I'm looking him dead in the face. Where the hell were you last night? He didn't show up. He didn't show up. If there was a ticket on a plane, that somebody impersonated him. He he wasn't there. Now y'all can act like y'all y'all can act like I'm making this up. Go back and while I watch this game from start to finish. Dez Bryant did not show up. I've never seen that before. Okay. Dez Bryant, look, are you ready for this? Dez Bryant, the dude, I strike that. The dude that I saw wearing '88 last night, mm -hmm. he looked soft, soft. Now. I'm telling you right now, go back and watch the tape. I'm not, again, Max, right? Don't hold me to this. I'm not talking about the season. I'm not talking about his career. I'm not talking, about, I'm not talking about the bad. nine previous games. I'm talking about last bad. night. I have never seen that number 88, supposedly Des Bryant, play like that. There was an impersonator last night. He wasn't there. He did not but show listen, up. Listen, this he is, did not this show up. Am I, I agree. I'm not Am defending I? Des Bryant. Des Bryant had a bad game but, yesterday. Uh -huh. Now, right. you, if you if you take it to mean was he worth yesterday. the money yesterday? No, he wasn't. But the thing about football is. Everything you do comes down to whether or not you had a bad game. Come, come on, down man. to two or three well, here's the, here's the, moments. Here's the, here's he had, he had the three issue. bad moments. Here's the issue. Okay. Wide receiver is the most dependent position in football, right? Earlier mm -hmm. this season, when we were talking about Odell and his struggles, and I came on here and said, it's more Eli to me. Because if you give Odell the chances in the right situation, he's going to make plays. You, you trying to say that Dez, happened last night? Can I finish? Go ahead. Dez Bryant is a combat football catcher. He's not a great route runner. He's not a speedster. He's a guy that when it's the balls in the air and it's a 50-50 ball, he comes down with the balls. Last night, Janoris Jenkins didn't allow him to do that. Dak Prescott didn't give him the opportunities to do that. Now, if you look at the play on the slant, he slipped. Janoris Jenkins beat him. It wasn't Dez Bryant not trying to make a play. It wasn't Dez Bryant not trying to work. He was beaten. Her Last night, Janoris Jenkins was just a better player. I did not question his effort. I never said that. Well, listen. I said to you, I used the word soft. 
I said that I, I said that this was soft effort. Is it? Matt, 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 that's zip point. it. Wait a second. You two, you gotta effort. stop it. Y'all gotta that's, stop it. Y'all listen, gotta stop it. When you call I'm someone soft, defending, you're questioning the effort. I'm not defending. You question that. I'm not, I'm not defending. It. His, I'm not defending his play from last night. What I'm saying is he was beaten. Janoris Jenkins was better. Janoris Jenkins is a tough matchup for him because he's strong and he's quicker and he's faster. So the things that Dez Bryant does to muscle smaller so, smaller defensive backs, he can't do. So, it's a terrible matchup. Also, Dak Prescott didn't throw any balls on point back shoulder. I saw him give him up. You didn't see, you didn't see Dez Bryant giving up on a couple of rounds? No, he wasn't giving and, up. At he, no was time. he didn't give up he on was, any rounds. He was, he was at any rounds. Uh, yeah, really? yeah, he ran some lazy routes. He, he didn't I, I saw some lazy, lazy routes. Do y'all I saw not, some lazy routes. Time out. Do y'all yes, not today. watch all the games? That's not different. If, De if Dez Bryant is on a post route and the guy has him top shoulder, he doesn't finish. Let's not talk about it like he just did this last night. Okay, then These, But listen, okay, we okay. miss those things. You okay. know why it's we miss those things? Defender. But you know why we miss those things? Because on those same days, he catches the touchdown. On those same days, he has six receptions. So today, since we didn't see him make those All other right. plays, now well, we're well, critiquing well, things well, we see every week. A couple of things. I'm glad you brought up the question about do y'all not watch the games. I'm going to ask you about that when you open your mouth about some basketball. Because, see, I, hey, <laughs> and really the only thing I watch, I actually watch hey, everything. Listen. But that's okay. Hey, no, that's all right. 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 That's did not run every right. And you're right about that. But in the end, all yeah. I'm saying okay. is yesterday, that was an impersonator. I expect more from Des Bryant. It better not happen again. He shouldn't be allowing that to happen. Right, fire was, him it, up. Uh, come on now. Do, come on I now. I do, I do that's all I'm saying. Play better. I got that, that's my love. You can't be looking like that. That was bad. That was bad. Microwave world, man. One game. We asked you guys earlier in the show, should the Cowboys now start Tony Romo? The results are in, and 73% say no, but 27% are saying yes. You're Steelers, gentlemen. We know you love Jerry Jones. They love run Jerry the Jones. bell yesterday. Fake pitch and a roll right. Prescott's got Williams. Oh, and an easy walk-in touchdown for Terrence Williams. Prescott deep ball down the middle of the field. The pass intercepted by the Giants. Prescott had only thrown two interceptions coming into tonight. He's thrown two tonight. And back to throw. Gets one left. Odell's got it on the run. Break three across the 40. He's to the 30. Foot race 20. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown Giants. 61 yards. Back to throw. He looks left. He throws left. He's got Desert caught it and fumbled it. Picked up by Landon Collins. And the Dallas Cowboys 11 game winning streak. Is going to come to an end. Hello again. Welcome back into First Take. The New York football giants without JPP defeated the Cowboys for the second time this season, snapping their 11-game winning streak. It was the Cowboys' first game this season with three turnovers, and they held Des Dak Prescott to under 200 yards. The G-Men are now two games behind the Cowboys at 9-4. and four. Max Kellerman, hmm. should Big Blue be the favorites in the NFC? No, they shouldn't. Not the favorites. And by the way, that's just how uh, we Giants fans like it. They shouldn't be the favorites, but they should be what's known as a live underdog. You think about what they are. Their defense looks like it could be becoming elite. It was elite yesterday, as good as any defense this year, against that Cowboys offense, which has been high-powered all year. But we'll see, and, and they've consistently gotten better throughout the course of the season. Maybe not game over game, but if you look at any three or four games and compare it to the previous three or four, the defense has been improving. And, and now it's hit like a, a really, really good level. And as I said earlier in the show, Jerry Reese deserves credit. Not, he's missed in a lot of drafts, and usually free agent signings don't work. But the two biggest free agent signings in the offseason where they spent all that money, Janaris Jenkins, who a lot of people said, well, he's including me, he's a B-plus, maybe not an A. He gambles a lot. But he's been much more than a B-plus this year. And, of course, Olivier Vernon has been um, a, uh, a, uh, a beast. I mean, that's, he's, he's, and these two guys have, along with the rest of the defense, coalesced, and, and they're tough. And then you have on the offense... 
the greatest home run hitter in the game, Odell Beckham Jr., where if your defense can just keep you in the game, he's liable to do something spectacular that wins. With Eli, who, as we, who I've mentioned in the past in the postseason, is the most clutch quarterback in the postseason in the history of the NFL. So they have a puncher's chance. Stephen A., you, we talked about this earlier in the show. Um, when we were kids, there was a heavyweight named Ernie Shavers. Remember him? Yes, I do. Knockout yes. artist extraordinaire. Yeah. That's right. Now, you wouldn't pick him necessarily against the best heavyweights, but he might knock him out. I mean, he's just got to catch him with that right hand. The Giants have a puncher's chance, but even a little more than that because the defense is so good. It keeps them in the game and gives them a realistic chance to land that haymaker. So, no, they shouldn't be favorites, but they're the team that no one's going to want to play in the playoffs. They're, they're more than a tough out. They are a live dog. Well, just like you brought up any shavers, let's not forget Mike Weaver, Max, but a lot of people good don't one. know about that. We'll leave that alone. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, that's right. I'm, just, good one. I'm, just break, I'm just breaking it down. Yeah. Let Max know. I know a little boxer, too. No but, but, but here's the deal. Getting back to this point, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you and say that on this particular day, the Giants should be the team considered the number one threat in the NFC to the Cowboys. Because if the Cowboys are the best team within the division, we're looking at a Seattle Seahawks team. Earl Thomas going down sort of changes that for me. It's not that Seattle can't step in and handle their business, but that's a devastating loss for the Seattle Seahawks defense. On the offensive side of the ball, the offensive line along with their running game are question marks right now. I don't trust Atlanta, even though I'm paying attention to Tampa and they're climbing up in my psyche. And the Detroit Lions are right now the number two seed in the NFC. They can't be ignored. Here's why I would say the Giants are the number one threat. Because the Cowboys are supposedly number one. Okay. And who has the Cowboys numbers thus far this season? It would happen to be the Giants. So being in the NFC, being familiar with the number one team in the conference, where the Super Bowl, where the road to the Super Bowl is going to have to come through in order to get to that point, that's where the Giants sort of, you know, tickle my psyche just a little bit. It's not that I think they're better than Seattle. Not even I'm sure they're better than Detroit or, any, or Tampa or anything like that because there are questions about the Giants' offense. But I think the Giants and what they're able to do against Dallas, combined with Eli's performance in the postseason, combined with how the defense is playing right now and who we're talking about them potentially going up against, I think you have to look at the Giants, uh, Ryan. Yeah. Well, I saw Sorry, last night, last night, uh, going to get some chicken wings. Mm -hmm. At the Double Tree, yeah, okay, you know, okay, uh, so that's a lot. That's TMI, yeah. but it's okay. Yeah, so, okay. I, so I go okay. downstairs and I'm asked the question, <laughs> right. "Who you got tonight?" Right, and I say, "I got the Giants." Mm -hmm. Not because I think the Giants are the best team in the NFC. Mm -hmm. I think they're the best matchup for the Dallas Cowboys. So it's like when Chris Weidman beat Anderson Silva, right? Yep. Anderson Silva was unbeatable. And Chris Weidman beat him, and I said to myself, Spider. he won't be a champion like Anderson Silva. Somebody will beat him. So just because you can beat the team considered the best doesn't, mean you're, doesn't the best. mean you're the best team. Now, if we look at what the Giants have done, you look at they beat the Dallas Cowboys, and they beat the Baltimore Ravens. Mm -hmm. Everybody else they've beaten, if we give us eight more people and we play both ways, we can probably compete with them. Mm -hmm. right? So they haven't beat a lot of teams that are competing to win a championship. We have to see them do more. You have to see them go on the road, which it looks like they will have to do if they can't catch the Dallas Cowboys and beat good football teams. You beat the Baltimore Ravens while they're in a losing streak. Mm -hmm. You go to Pittsburgh last week to have an opportunity to show the six wins in the row for real, and you lose again. Do I think they match up well against the Cowboys? Yes. If they play in the NFC Championship or Division Round, would I pick them? Yes. I don't know if they can go to Atlanta and win in the playoff well, game. I don't know if they can go to Tampa but, and but, win in the playoff let's game. Analyze but you why. have to do those things. Let's analyze why. And you correct me if I'm wrong here. Tampa, it's about their defense. Yes. And you got a gamer in your quarterback, mm -hmm. James Winston. Atlanta is about that offense. Basically, their pack is passing that. Even though they can run the football, it's predicated. Their success is predicated on their ability to pass the football. Detroit's success is predicated on Matthew Stafford. Even though we respect Theo Riddick, it's not like they got a stout running right. game Definitely. in the Motor City. Well, what's the problem with the Cowboys when they go up against the Giants? The Jets, Damon Harrison, switched over to the Giants. And he's a run stopper. He's an elite run stopper. He attributes a lot at being at that left defensive tackle spot. And so because you have that and you have something to attack Dallas's strength, that buffers your status against the Cowboys. If the Giants were paying against anybody else, we may not be saying that because everybody else ain't trying to run the football to beat you. But what Dallas showed us last night, yet again, 
is that no matter what we say about Dak, no matter how impressed we are about Dak, their success on offense is predicated on their ability to run the football. He had a, but he rushed for over 100 yards last night. That's right. Night. But it 21 in the second half. Right, yeah. 21 in the second half. It wasn't, to me, it wasn't the ability to stop Ezekiel Elliott. It's something Max talked about in week one, and I, and I kind of made fun of him, and now it's showing. Janoris Jenkins, who I thought was a gambler, who I thought would put the New York Giants in bad situations, has been, has been a revelation. He's been worth every single penny no question. he's gotten. And so what they've done now is now they're a matchup defense. They're the old Green Bay Packers with Al Harris and Charles Woodson. They get guy on guy and shut them and, down. And, and, and so, listen, I'm not saying Max is wrong because he did make a very valid point about Janoris Jenkins. He deserves credit for that. What I'm saying is, is the real litmus test yesterday. Because when you think about, when I think about Janoris Jenkins, and Janoris Jenkins can ball, I got nothing but props, and Dominique Rogers, Kamari right. Hanlon, and Eli and the Apple is going to be special, I believe. My point is, I don't know if I'm willing to go as far as you're going until I see them brothers go up against an elite passing attack when it counts. Well, listen, I'm not, what I'm saying is against, the, that's why I'm saying it's this team. Got it. Right? That's why I'm saying it's it. when they match up against and the also, Dallas Cowboys, they match up well. Max. And also, and also, the fact is, the, 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 what I like about that matchup is the Giants have a problem protecting Eli. He has to get rid of it in 1.5 seconds or he's crushed, yeah. right? And they can't block for the run. But when you're playing Dallas, you can give the ball to Perkins, the, you know, because Dallas doesn't get pressure. You know, they actually have a very good run defense, but they don't get pressure. So that, that, that kind of takes away the real issue for the Giants, which is they, the offensive line weakness. The Eric Flowers has to hold on every play because he's beaten on every play. But if you can't get pressure, you're playing into that, to, to, to the Giants' hands. So I, I agree with you, uh, Ryan. It's a good matchup. The Giants, uh, you know, Dallas is a good matchup for them. And in terms of the other teams, though, Seattle's not unbeatable. We just saw it. We'll see if the Packers even make it into the playoffs. When you bring up Tampa and Atlanta, they're, they're good. You know, I wouldn't say they're better than the Giants. They're all about the same. Uh, I probably like the Giants against the Falcons and maybe even against Tampa, although they've been very good recently. I don't see any world beaters in the NFC except for the Cowboys, who the Giants match up with.